Today, we've got two major sources of news. One is a community gathering. The other is a monthly Q&A with the developers, which is pretty exciting. And I've got to say, it's unusual that like the most important news happens in these community gatherings. And like you low key kind of got to like figure out where to figure out the really important, like most pivotal game changing stuff, which is coming. And here it is. So subscribe if you haven't already, because I will deliver this stuff to you as fast as I can. And if you're wondering, just cool, you, you look and sound a little sick. That's because actually, if you were in my stream last night where I trained 40 million power, I was acting delirious and I actually was a little bit delirious. Like at first, I, w I had my like my muscles were aching a little bit. And I was like, ah, I've been streaming like a gazillion hours today. It's probably because I've been standing all day. And then it felt a little cold and I was like, oh, I'm probably just probably just cold in the basement. And then when the stream ended, I checked my temperature and it was 102, the highest fever I have had actually ever in my entire life. I was and I was out. I was gone. But I'm feeling, you know, better-ish this morning. So, uh, yeah, let's just get after it then, shall we? Is the new commander, Ragnar Prime, mentioned at the community gathering a new generation infantry commander or a KVK-specific commander? You know, I worked years in product management. I talk about this all the time. And I think people do the best they can, but don't do a great job of splitting the, the like real question they're asking from like the solutions they already have in mind. So all that to say, what they're trying to ask is, how do we get Ragnar Prime? It's a lot simpler if you just say it like that. <laughs> Ragnar Prime is a unique scenario commander, but he is not exclusive to that story. He can be obtained outside the KVK storyline, although he will not be available in the Wheel of Fortune or Mightiest Governor. Within the story, he features a unique accessory mechanism that does not apply outside of that story. All right, so still we don't know how we're going to unlock him. It seems like the developers don't want us to know yet, or they haven't decided, they probably decided, because they avoided sharing that information. <laughs> Um, I know Omniarch has hypothesized it could be in the um, expedition, but I don't think it'll be in the expedition given the fact that they're saying it won't be available in the early game. But maybe what they mean is it's in the expedition only when you get to Season of Conquest. When is the vacation permit expected to launch? What vacation permit? Now, they must. this is a thing they must have talked about at the meetup, a vacation permit. The vacation permit is expected to launch in October with version 1.0.87. Here's the thing. Okay, if you play this game, but you need to like do something with your life and you want to come back to the game, you are dead weight to your kingdom. They need to zero you. It is imperative that they zero your account. Sucks to suck. That or you need to go fully, fully, fully inactive for 30 days. Also sucks to suck. So the game has always needed an intermediary solution that wasn't like you are destroyed if you stop playing and want to play again, right? Or if you want to like play passively for a while and maybe pick things up later, you can't stay in the kingdom you're in. You're dead weight to that kingdom. You count to matchmaking and you make their KVKs harder and you contribute nothing. So the game is always needed. I've been saying for years they need it. And it is cool that a vacation permit might be on the way. What are the specific restrictions for vacation, uh, vacation permit during Lost Kingdom events? So governor is using the voucher. Weird that it's a voucher. Like, do you buy the ability to go on vacation? Um, cannot leave zone four, participate in PVP rallies, assist with alliance reinforcements, or take part in Lost Kingdom ranking events, such as enemy clearance. That must be enemy elimination or honor rankings. All right, so there is still stuff you can do, which is why if I put the pieces together, it sounds like this vacation permit Many years later is uh, a thing I said the game needed and is probably on its way, um, is the ability to customize stratagems in the new KVK story unrestricted, or can we only obtain stratagems through bundles? Customization is a part of the KVK storyline and will not be available through bundles. Yeah, I feel like this is a question asked by someone who's never played with stratagems before, because you, you don't have to use bundles at all for stratagems in other KVKs. Um, you just like pick the things. And the, the thing is that like, I like to nerd out on the details, but like, if you get busy in life, like you just need someone else to tell you what to pick. Cause it's complicated enough that it's like, bro, you just tell me <laughs> you, your kingdom should have a perspective on what stratagems everyone should be picking. And 
So it's really just like the leaders that decide and then they tell everybody, here's the combinations in an organized kingdom anyways. Um, not that you can't do it on your own, I'm just saying, you know. Um, are the city and migration effects mentioned at the meet and greet exclusive to VIP-19? Can these effects be displayed with skins other than Zenith of Power? Um, so if you're subscribed to the channel, you know that a long time ago I went to a meetup where they talked about VIP-19 coming to the game and that VIP-19 adds cosmetics. After reaching a specific VIP level, a new shop will be unlocked where VIP points can be used to acquire these effects. They can be applied to all skins, not just the Zenith of Power skins. So they just happen to, in their examples, be using Zenith of Power skins. Okay, great. Um, in the new story where players can freely choose their starting faction and bonuses, is participation based on individuals, alliances, or kingdoms? Participation is still based on kingdom registration, but teams will be formed from match kingdoms when factions are selected. So does the kingdom pick the faction? Players can still freely choose their starting faction. I, okay, so I'm deeply confused. Maybe you can help me out, chat. There's a new KVK format. I still can't figure out, because there are four factions and you pick a faction, if players then get sorted to those factions or if, or if whole kingdoms go to factions together, I, I am, I'm confused. Uh, and it's probably just a me thing, but let me know in the comments how this works. How do players obtain the vac vacation permit? Is it distributed directly to kingdoms or must players purchase it with gems or through other means? The vacation permit will be refreshed monthly and does not require purchase, similar to special migration slots. This just seems really weird to me. I don't know what problem vacation permit is solving anymore. Like, here's what I envision is you've got players that have played the game for a long time. They want to take a little break. They want to be a part of the community. They don't want to have to log in every day. They don't really want to be obligated to KVK, but they don't want to leave this community that they've attached to with like you form really meaningful bonds, but they don't want to be dead weight to that community because they know how trash that would be of them to do. And I mean that respectfully, like it sucks to screw over your team because you want to hang out with them, but you don't want to contribute. So like, it's just like, what, like, why does anyone other than the person who wants to use a vacation permit need to be involved? <laughs> My account is going in vacation status. I'm like, that's it. You're good, right? You're good. Is Commander Ragnar Prime restricted by season? Can he only be used after season three or is he available in all seasons? He can only be used in season of conquest. Will Ragnar Prime be available through the VIP-19 chest? No. Can the exclusive accessory artifact for Ragnar Prime, mentioned in the official account, be used in other stories. It can only be used in the annual story and not in any other story. So basically, the Ragnar Prime accessory that makes him good for any troop type, that's not a thing. He's infantry, unless you're in that one KVK story. Only in that story is it relevant. Is the exclusive accessory for Ragnar um, acquired directly, or does it need to be forged with materials how can it be obtained? Uh, and they said it can be obtained directly after reaching a certain milestone in a global event. That's actually surprising to me. First of all, I'm surprised you even need to ask this question. I would have assumed that when you enter into the KVK, you get the artifact. And then when you leave the KVK, they take away the artifact because like it doesn't do anything anywhere else. <laughs> so why, why do you need it? Um, but actually what they're saying is there's a global event where you get it. Okay, interesting. Um, all in all, I think vacation permit is a great thing. I think this implementation is confusing to me because I wasn't at the meetup and this dev feedback gives the answers to the questions, but none of the context from the meetup. So that's interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, Ragnar Prime also. <laughs> How are we going to get him? Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Maybe, maybe he's a new expedition commander, but I don't think so. It's a, I mean, it'd be awesome. That would be an 11 out of 10 decision, but we'll see. But then we have the dev feedback for September. So let's get a look at the feedback here. Suggestion, implement a reputation system for kingdoms, allowing other kingdoms from their KVKs to provide feedback on their experiences. This is so interesting. Thank you for your suggestion. This is currently under internal development. Like, here's, here's the thing, okay? Basically, whatever kingdom I'm in, is low-key just going to get shit on. Like, they just are. Like, like, it, like, what qualifies a kingdom to rate another kingdom is what I'm trying to say, right? Because you need to be actually qualified to rate and provide feedback on a kingdom. Do I think a rating system for kingdoms will be valuable? Yes. 
right? Like, yes, I do see how this could be valuable, but also the right guardrails have to be there. Otherwise, like you're just going to have random people raiding random kingdoms, which doesn't make any sense. And even if you were in KVK with a, another kingdom, that doesn't mean you necessarily qualify to rate them, right? Like we were just in KVK with, with 34 and they were trash talking me all through the start of the KVK. I'm like, that's fine. But if they had raided my kingdom, like it, it wouldn't have been a good rating. So like what qualifies one kingdom to raid another kingdom? Now, you know, pro tip, trash talk after you win, not before you win. Because then if you lose and you call a kingdom trash and you lose to them, what does that make you? But, you know, whatever. So suggestion, can we make Relic Coins more accessible for all players? Sick burn, bro. <laughs> Earning only 40 from... I mean, like, who thinks it's a good idea to make fun of the kingdom you're fighting before you've won? You open yourself up to two possibilities. Okay? You win, and, like, you could have just waited to do the trash talking. It'd be just the same. It doesn't really change anything. Or you lose and you trash talk them and then you lost to them. Oh, that sucks. Anyways, um, can we make relic coins more accessible to all players, earning only 40 from daily quests while some commanders require 2,200 is unbalanced? Yeah, like relic coins were really easy to get. Then they made them really hard to get. And I think this question ultimately is like, bro, what is going on with the museum system? Like, what is it designed to do, bro? Like, let's lock in let's let's get this museum system with a clear objective doing the thing um and i think it does do awesome things like alexander the great still being relevant is an 11 out of 10 i think it's super cool but other commanders it's like why are they not at all relevant even though they needed the buffs more like you know like hannibal barca like why is he not good <laughs> he should be amazing with not only is he a vip commander okay so he should be good but also like it, he's Hannibal Barca. Historically, he was a badass, and like the museum buff should be taking these commanders that are everybody knows are are too weak, and they should be making them either balanced or pushing the power a little bit, like happened with Alexander the Great. My opinion. But the easiest solution to all of this is to just give people more of the currency to work with, right? Because um, then you can just buff more commanders. And it's really the early game players that need the currency the most. The new museum content has been released. Players should check the patch notes for upcoming events, as there will be significant opportunities to acquire materials during those events badass right like that's the easiest solution is like yeah you're right we're just going to give you more materials <laughs> yeah do more do more with it we got you which is great um that's a great change uh suggestion please consider allowing governors to regain some of their speed ups resources and action points along with troop returns after kvk this would benefit free to play players and encourage more active participation in kvks since ab bottles are hard to recover consider revamping even the crusade to allow exchange of arrows and castle books for AP bottles. The suggestion has been noted, but it may not be implemented exactly as proposed. The design team will review it further. You know what's funny? Like, I said this, like, five years ago. I was like, hey, you know what? If you gave people back some speed-ups and resources, etc., they queue for KVK more, and then they're getting more crystal technology, right? Right? And they're also playing the game more, and they're enjoying the game. So it's really a question of, like, how frequent is KVK supposed to be? And do you really intend for kingdoms to be taking time off between KVKs? My opinion, which I've expressed long ago, is that fewer KVK registration windows with more kingdoms in each registration window makes for better matchmaking, because what are we talking about? There's more kingdoms to work with to balance out what the KVKs should be. Um, and that KVK matchmaking balance is the single highest leverage thing to improve the quality of the game. Prove me wrong. Seriously. Think about it. Right? Like, if your KVK matchmaking is imbalanced, all the rest doesn't matter, does it? Think about it. Right? So, anyways, I'm, I am a huge proponent of doing the things that let players enter KVK more frequently. It's more fun. I bet they make more money. That's a win-win in my book, right? But maybe, maybe there's like third degree and fourth degree consequences of that that I'm not seeing. And that is probably very likely. <laughs> it's easy to be a critic. Hard to be the owner. Anyways, uh, suggestions. Provide more ways to obtain transmutation reset crystals. Bro! I got this insane legendary armament. You've heard me say this before. But the stats were bad, but it had a legendary inscription. I used two transmutation crystals, and I did not get a single stat update that was an improvement. 
I was a hundred transmutation stones. So not only did I have to buy a hundred transmutation stones, but like the armament's still not better. And I have to just keep putting reset crystals into it until I get a better stat on it. Cause it's a legendary inscription. You, ne you, you can't do better than that. <laughs> unless you get a double inscription, which you're never going to get. Not unless you're Yoda or free to play, apparently. <laughs> but certainly I'm not getting them. So like, uh, so acquiring rare or special inscriptions is already challenging. Understatement of my life and limiting players to only two reset crystals per KVK severely restricts their ability to make these inscriptions usable. I completely agree. The problem we are solving here is that it is painful as is to get a good armament. And then the funny thing is that even when you get a good armament, 90% of the time, it's still bad. Like, heh, okay. So I was going into KVK. I had a big fight. It was against 1960. I applied my legendary inscription into the best arch armament I had. And then like two weeks later, I got a better armament base stats for that slot. And it's like, well, sucks to suck, bro. You got a better armament, but it's worse. Like, there's so much of that already. Let us get W's on armaments, is what this player is saying, right? Like, give us more ways. And, and the system team has planned some implementations. We'll reassess the distribution and consider adding more ways to obtain them in the future. This is, I think, a spender problem more than it is a um, free-to-play problem. And the reason I say that is that even as a spender on my restart account, which is like 120 million power, I don't have the stones, but I have the four reset -y crystals. Like, I, I just don't have enough stones to do like all the things i need to be doing and be resetting like armaments besides the fact that i'm not getting any good armaments on that account anyway it's like pff, let's pff, right okay so you know yeah uh, i think that this is a for spenders they're like bruh i need more of these crystals because they got tons of armaments and they actually have the stones to do it um but i think more more stones and more crystals would reduce pain from the armament system. Mind, don't, don't mind my passion. Uh, suggestion, please remove the need for healing speed ups during Ark of Osiris practice matches. It is now possible in balance mode, which eliminates the need for healing speeds. Good. Um, I would say if you want to make, I don't know, Ark of Osiris is designed to use your own account. So yeah, that's fair. All that's fair. Suggestion, we... Oh, dude, I need music like do, 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 right? Like we, the players of Rise of Kingdoms, request a rework of the current leadership commanders. Actually, I'm all on board for this. Hold up. Wait, you have my attention. And the introduction of new ones, specifically we, we, the people propose, remove the three troop type condition. Leadership commanders should be able to provide the same bonuses. Um, yeah, True to any troop type similar to the leadership set glorious goddess rather than being restricted to all three troop types this change would enhance strategic flexibility and improve the overall gameplay exp experience true revamp talents update the talent trees particularly the left and right sides as well as the, as the final leadership talent to align with these changes introduce new commanders add leadership commanders designed with these updates in mind particularly for field combat providing fresh strategies and options for players the um the problem with this we the people approach is they've they've stated solutions but not actually clearly communicated what problem they're solving i think the problem they're solving is that leadership commanders require you to have all troop types and what they're saying is i want commanders that are good with all like i can just use them with any one troop type i want um but, but what they're really asking for is like broken powerful commanders like the three troop type restriction if designed well should give you an advantage if you have three troop types, but you should be fine to use the commander mono troop. That's like, if they're designed well, that's what they should do, right? I, I mean, my biggest issue here with leadership is it actually is, hmm, there's two problems with leadership. First of all, the leadership meta, and, and it's not even a debate, is to use Trajan, okay? Now, now whether you want to use him in the open field in KVK, whatever, but like no one can argue about his status in Canyon. He's the GOAT, okay? And because he was meta for like three years, people invested in leadership, talented equipment, 
This is a Chiskel problem. Legendary leadership talents and equipment before they even released leadership equipment. Well, leadership equipment wasn't even a thing for years. Okay. And then they add that and, and, and we're going to lose half our materials. Every material we committed toward talenting, every material we committed toward awakening, like bro, like I need the ability to take my non-leadership equipment and make that stinking stuff actually be leadership equipment. Like I, I, it, it's unfathomable to me. Like two years, I can't even say the words. It's unfathomable to me. <laughs> two years later, here we are. And I'm like, yeah, I got this leadership equipment. I'm like, it's not leadership equipment. It's infantry equipment, talented leadership, because that was the meta. Okay. When the game design tells you to do something, which it did, and you do it, you should be rewarded, never punished. So my opinion, my full chess school's philosophy on game design, good behavior should be rewarded. That is actually like a, it is a life philosophy. Uh, suggestion, add passports to the returnee shop to facilitate migration for players who quit and return later. The suggestion has been received. Bro. Okay. So, so let me explain the problem here. All right. Let me, let me give it to you straight. You have dead weight in your kingdom. You want them out. They're dead weight. Okay. And because of the game design, maybe with vacation mode, this will be solved. But you either get rid of your dead weight or your kingdom dies. Pick which one you want. Right. This is true of all businesses, by the way. You like either can have hard conversations with the people that work at the business or the business fails. Take your pick. Right. Like you can either have the hard conversation with the low performers or you can have the hard conversation with everyone. Sorry, the business failed because we have all these low performers that are screwing over the business. But like the point I'm trying to make is you either prune your dead weight or you die. Choose. Right. And so if you're pruning your dead weight from your kingdom, the crazy part is that these players have to get passports somewhere. Well, if you think the deadweight players are going to buy their passports, you got another thing coming. <laughs> okay. So they're like, no, give me the passports for free from the shop. Well, this requires players to have farmed up credits to store or stock the shop with the passports. Okay. So the hardworking kingdom has to work super hard above and beyond to stock passports for the deadweight slackers to find a new home. This, this is insane. It's insane, right? Like, and you do that, by the way, or your kingdom dies. So you do it, obviously. But then all the good players, the, the good players, the ones who actually like progress the kingdom and its wellness have nothing they can buy in the shop because all the alliances are drained on credits, getting the dead weight out of the kingdom. Now I'm, exa I'm over exaggerating, but I think that the weirdness of like, you know, like fake building flags with one troop to get credits to have credits to play the game is like that whole cycle is broken and I would smash that thing open and, and fix it, in my opinion. Just, just, just do it. <laughs> fix it, right? Because like Alliance shops cannot actually be stocked with stuff. Like a proper kingdom keeps its shop empty. You can't actually put things in there. What are we talking about? What are we even talking about? You can't. You cannot. Not until you're in KVK and it's like now you may buy teleports, right? Or like... Now you may buy a Civ swap if you're a big trainer and you're, you're going to like train a bunch of troops or but, but like, you, you, <laughs> why? I don't know. Suggestion. Implement a color coding system for marches in dot mode. When players have multiple marches of the same troop type, this feature is necessary because the commander icon is not visible. Oh, I see. Yeah. So this is again, um, they, they got to it. They, they finally, like, they, they found the problem. They conveyed the problem they were trying to solve here. Um, the problem is, if I'm in dot mode where it's not strategic view, I think, so they can't see the troop types, just color them differently. I, I, I don't like that solution. Um, and that's a, that's a person who's not a designer designing a solution, right? So, so what, what they're saying, though, is if I'm using dot mode, I, I don't know. They just need to use strategic view. Like, what are we talking about? Just use, just use the strategic view. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. We have noted the issue and we'll explore. Dude, I said like a hundred years ago, I said three millennia ago that we needed different colors for the troops. And like, finally, we got that when you spectate a KVK, you can select a kingdom's perspective from which to see the colors. And like, hey, look, blue, orange, gray, and red are good enough. Right. And you can really like see what's happening, which is cool. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do lots of people have this problem where they're using dot mode? But I guess they're saying the commander icon is not a visible, not visible above the march in low settings. Hmm. I see why they want colors. Um, 
I don't know. A designer should design a solution for that if it's enough of a problem. I'm not opposed, but I also think like, I think, I think I've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. My, my post 102 fever delirium leaves me perhaps extra forthcoming and honest. But uh, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I think there are some really hype things happening in here. And I think there's some really great opportunities that I hope get capitalized on, baby. It'd be good for the players and good for the devs, I hope. Until next time. Oh, no, 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 no. Until next time, bro. Hey, watch the video. Card will be right over here. It's the live stream where I go delirious. I, I actually, I get delirious training troops. It's weird. It only, it only took two hours and a fever of 102, but who knew? Right over here. Card, video, stream. Watch it.